I'm Margaret Papillo, the Area Superintendent for the Northwest Learning Community, and you're watching FCS TV. With the Fulton County Schools mobile app, your school district comes alive at the touch of a button. It allows you to easily connect to the learning and parent portal or navigate through current news and events. You can easily check out the latest updates with social media and quickly retrieve contact information for schools. You can also view a comprehensive calendar of events, get lunch schedules for your school, connect with the superintendent, and more. It's your school district available at your fingertips. I want to go into um, business and engineering. So I want to be a civil engineer when I grow up. Um, I think I want to be um, either a missionary or a structural engineer or a civil engineer. So I could go into Engineers Without Borders because they help people um, to get access to clean water, um, build bridges in um, rural areas where they don't have a lot. So here at Johns Creek High School, we offer a four-year engineering program that starts with the foundations of engineering then students can take the engineering concepts, engineering applications, and research and design. It is a four-year project-based learning program that students choose to take. It's an elective here at Johns Creek High School that we explore engineering concepts, the engineering design process, fields of engineering, and we apply our thought process that we learn and our skill set we learn through projects. For me, I am very interested in engineering and thought it would be a fun thing to do my first year of high school. I chose to do this class because of uh, my family. My grandfather was an engineer and I want to follow in his footsteps. Since I've been around like six, I've, my dad's been introducing me into new projects and stuff at our house and I just am really interested in stuff like this. I've been teaching the engineering pathway now for 12 years and I have a lot of students that have come through my program, gone to engineering school and are actually engineers now. It's really fun and interesting. There's always something to do. The best part of the class is probably the teacher. He's very relaxed. He's very, he's very good at what he does. He teaches in a very efficient manner. I love it. It's fun. We bring technology in. Uh, we do some coding. We work with Raspberry Pis and Arduinos. We do coding on our robot. We do coding on our CNC mill. We do coding on our C uh, PLCs using ladder logic. So there is a lot of technology involved. When you bring the engineering side in, you bring the application side as well. So we are culminating all of that together of the research skills, the application of technology, but then the hand skills as well. In the year one class, we start with note card structures, the beginning of the school year, and how can we design with note cards holding up weight to getting height, and then we work into some paper airplanes and just getting them to think in a project-based way. As we get into the end of first semester of year one, we're doing the CO2 project. Next semester, these year one students will finish with a can crusher master project. They'll have eight weeks to do the project. They'll have twice as big of a group this time. We'll still have the leadership of the president, vice president, treasurer, and secretary. But now we're gonna build a fully automated can crushing system that they build from scratch. Once we get into the advanced classes and we get into years two and three, the concepts and applications, we bring in catapult, uh, drawbridge, ergonomic workstation, handicap assisted lifting device. Uh, we could do a solar cell vehicle, hand, uh, ergonomic workstation, uh, water desalinization, and aquaponics. If a student stays with us for all four years, which we hope they do, if this is their interest, they design and build their own project. I have given them design briefs and projects for three years at that point. In the fourth year, we're gonna work on some design ideas that interest them. They will write their own design brief, and then they will have eight weeks as a company of one to design and build their own master project. Um, I really like hands-on projects, and I like problem solving, so I was told engineering would be really fun and great for me, so I thought I'd give it a try. One main thing is I learned from this class is like never give up on like overload of information because there definitely is a lot of information from like the projects from all this research but I think once you like figure out to know the most important parts and keep up with that it's pretty simple and it's a lot of fun overall. 
the longer you're in this program, the more I wonder about you as an individual. So they get choice on what trainers they go to. So this is where they learn their hard content uh, in the equipment here in the classroom. They're learning how to use PLCs or ACDC, um, run the robot, run the CNC. That's our trainers that we go through. From there, we pick master projects to build and we're going to apply the skill sets that we learned at our trainers in our master projects. I like the students to have input on their companies, which is their teams that they're working with, and their master project. So I give a uh, list of master projects we're going to do for the period. I let them try to form their own companies. If they have any issues, I step in and form those companies, but I want them to try to work it out first. Again, another life skill. And then from the list, they will pick what master project they want to do to complete during that eight weeks. So they get input. It's a very personalized environment. And then once they're in their master project group, they get to select what jobs within the group they want to complete. So as you get a master project, you'll get a design brief. That design brief will give you the problem statement and then lay out the seven step engineering design process we follow here in class and what your design constraints are you must meet. So at the end of this project, your project must do these list of things. There's something interesting happening at Cambridge High School. A new group of enrollees are now on campus including birds, cats, rabbits, and more. Cambridge's new veterinarian program provides students a high-quality career pathway in the CTAE program. Whether animals are pets, livestock, or working animals, they matter to society, and the new program at Cambridge is an excellent pathway for students to become veterinarian professionals. Learn more by watching Leadership Matters, where Principal Ed Sperka talks about the program. So in the Foundations of Engineering class, we culminate the first semester with our CO2 project. Today my class is, we are working on a project that he assigned. Um, it's the CO2 project and we're making dragster race cars out of a block of wood. And we have to build a car made out of wood and it's going to be powered by carbon dioxide. Basically a clean slate, we're designing a CO2 car to run down a racetrack with, on a drag strip and um, we're going through the aerodynamics of the car, what do we want the car to look like, the design process of starting a company and things like that, and just the overall experience of just like starting up a company and making a product. Students will work for four weeks in small groups. We bring in some leadership styles. We have a president, a vice president, treasurer, and secretary of each group, and they create a company, a company name, a company logo. They'll create company t-shirts so we can get some branding in of their project that they will build. My role as the president of the group is to make sure everyone's on task. I'm in charge of the design of the car. Um, I'm the secretary and treasurer, so I'm in charge of organizing everything and then making sure that all of our expenses are paid as to what we buy. I'm the president for my group, so I make sure that everything's okay and before we have anything final to say, I have the final say in everything and everything's perfect and then they will do research papers, they will create their drawings on paper and on the computer, and build a fully working CO2 car. They will do a full presentation to the class with their car, their research, their PowerPoint, their logo, their t-shirt, and give a full presentation about everything, and then we'll race the cars and have fun. First, we had to research about different types of cars and history, and that way we could make a design and at least know how these came to be made. We're putting CO2 canisters on the back and racing it down a ramp, basically. And then uh, we have groups, and each uh, person in our group has different parts. Then we had to uh, sketch our designs and make blueprints. Building the car is important, but also designing it first. If um, you've learned the design of the car and you know what you're doing for that, building actually becomes really easy when it comes to building the car afterwards. 
right now we are making um, PowerPoints to uh, present our idea and a flyer to get the word out. The best part of the project is like designing the car. It's like a challenge to try to get all the various principles like aerodynamics, weight and all, weight distribution. It's a nice challenge to do that, but also you have to be able to build it in real life. You can't just design it on a computer or paper. You also have to make it with the tools you have available to you, so that's always a good challenge. We use technology with our project to draw our designs on the computer, to do our research papers before we could even start building the car project. We also soon, hopefully tomorrow, are going to start um, cutting the wood block to actually build the car. I'm working on the logo for our group. Our name is the Advanced Automotive Association and our logo is going to have three bolded A's and it's going to have a flaming tire in the background. Um, we're competing just for bragging rights and for fun and for a grade all, all in the same uh, competition. Um, it's mostly just how fast and how fast your car can get from start to finish like a normal drag race. On the internet, I looked up a couple ideas and just saw this as a drag racing um, logo and it looked pretty cool. Fulton County Schools has received a new technology designation that recognizes its national leadership in student privacy protection and data security. Awarded by the Consortium for School Networking, the Trusted Learning Environment seal identifies school systems that demonstrate commitment to ensuring the privacy and security of student data. Only seven school systems nationwide received the TLE seal during its inaugural year. Fulton County Schools, where students come first. It's fun to see what first year students are doing because this is new to them. This is their first semester in the engineering program. Uh, sometimes it's hard for them to understand design constraints. So this is a great project to help them understand what full width means or full length of a project and having to redo sketches and drawings sometimes over and over to finally understand what design constraints are. Uh, I've seen some neat, unique holes in the middle, uh, some cars that look like, you know, F1 cars, you know, they, they're, they're being pretty unique about their cars, which I love. I, I, I want to see something different every year. Some of the times they'll be the same just because their research is the same, but I've seen some unique designs this year. What's unique about our car is we use a very powerful weight method called weight distribution. Since we did research and found out that most of the weight on drag cars and other cars are put towards the back of the car to allow it to have more traction off the line, we thought if we move the center of mass towards the back, going downhill, the inertia will be pushing the car down, allowing it to gain speed faster and overall achieving a faster speed. We took out weight in the middle of it to um, lose mass and we have like sharp edges to cut the wind. We've taken into account um, more design elements such as aerodynamics and most groups have accepted they, they look at aerodynamics in a more simple way rather than the more complicated aspects of it like they think the more streamlined which is correct but they don't look beyond the whole streamlined thing so they think the smallest and thinnest and the sleekest, the, you get the idea. Um, they think all that is optimal. We felt it would be more aero, aerodynamic if you just left the top surface the way it was and we actually took weight off the bottom. Our car is using a lot more curvature than other cars. Um, we believe that the car's um, angles have to be a little bit more um, curved, not like just straight. Now that's harder to drill and use the saws for, but we believe that we will be able to pull it off and have a really fast car. Well, our, our car is an American themed. It's red, white, and blue. Um, we have in the front, it goes in the front, we have a space clear out in the middle, and then we have two humps on the side. Most of the other, pe my competitor, my peers' cars will have uh, a curvature from down, except we took the curvature and put it on the top, I mean on the bottom. Our car is very aerodynamic and um, it, 
looks cool, so it adds pizzazz. I looked up the research projects on the different types of racing, drag racing of pro stock, top fuel cars, stuff like that, which really allows you to see how the changes in the design of the cars, they're more streamlined cars, to you have more cars that are built for going in circles, so you really see the differences in the design, so we thought that, well, since most drag cars are streamlined and things like that, that could apply to our car, making it faster, which overall, by this research and things like that, allow us to build a better product to make it go the fastest down the drag strip. Um, right now, I'm designing the top view and side view of my car, of my team's car, and we're hoping it will work, first building it and then racing it. This overall project, the car is the culminating fun part of it. We are really teaching the engineering design process. We want the kids to think in a design process way, having a problem, doing their research, picking the best solution, building, testing that solution, and what improvements would you make in the future. This car allows them to do all of those steps and complete their project, complete their research. Uh, when I get to the actual car, their design constraints meant it had to be full length of the original block, full width at the axles, and maintain a quarter of an inch of wood around the CO2 hole so that it can stay safe while they're racing. Hi, I'm Principal Lisa Nash, and you are watching FCS TV. Fulton County Schools has received a new technology designation that recognizes its national leadership in student privacy protection and data security. Awarded by the Consortium for School Networking, the Trusted Learning Environment seal identifies school systems that demonstrate commitment to ensuring the privacy and security of student data. Only seven school systems nationwide receive the TLE seal during its inaugural year. Fulton County Schools, where students come first. As you get to year four, that's our research and design class. I have given you design briefs for three years to follow. Now it's your turn to design something really cool uh, or something that interests you. Over the years, I've had all kinds of things built from a simulated elevator to a Healy shoe insertment uh, to students designing software that clean up things on your computer to solar charging uh, USB chargers. I've had a liquid cool computer built, which we have another liquid cool computer being built right now using mineral oil. So the entire uh, computer itself is immersed in the mineral oil and reduces the heat so you can run your computer at overclocked faster. Uh, I have a solar charging USB going right now that they can charge their phone off the solar energy rather than having to have a battery with them at all times. Probably a unique one I have right now, I have a student that's very interested in what he calls the X dimension. So he's uh, investigating wormholes and he's putting together a video presentation on his research on, on, on wormholes. Oh, well, mouthful there. Uh, but that's what he's researching because that's what interests him. Um, I could see him becoming an astrophysicist or something like that, but that's where his interest is. I have a lot of students that have used Arduinos and Raspberry Pis over the years. Uh, I've had an automatic drink dispensing system run by an Arduino before where you picked how many ounces of each flavor you wanted added and it would fill your drink. And this was even before the Coca-Cola freestyle machine came out, that this was his idea was to design a drink machine that you could come up with on your own. So, you know, it runs from software to actual hard objects to abstract objects like the, the wormholes. I'm Margaret Papillo, the Area Superintendent for the Northwest Learning Community, and you're watching FCS TV.
With the Fulton County Schools mobile app, your school district comes alive at the touch of a button. It allows you to easily connect to the learning and parent portal or navigate through current news and events. You can easily check out the latest updates with social media and quickly retrieve contact information for schools. You can also view a comprehensive calendar of events, get lunch schedules for your school, connect with the superintendent, and more. It's your school district available at your fingertips. I'm a member of the NAR, which is the National Association of Rocketry, and my goal in this project is to get a level two high power rocketry certification. Yeah, so this student's been with me now four years, and a couple years ago, we did a, did a uh, rocket project to end the year. We had a one week left, and the students picked to do a rocket project, and they could use a rocket kit, they could build one from scratch, but if they used the kit, they had to modify at least one thing. They couldn't use just a given kit. And so, so the goal of this project is to successfully build and launch a rocket that uses a level two motor and recover it so I can get certified to continue to use level two motors and build, build more large scale rocket projects. Interesting enough, it just sparked an interest with him. That was the last week of the school year. That summer, he went and built three more projects himself, all about rockets. Well, for this project, I decided, I'm not going for altitude per se, I'm going for more of just size, because with a larger, when you try to go for altitude, when you try to build the rocket for a maximum altitude, what happens is you need very strong materials because the speed of the rocket approach gets over Mach 1, which is the speed of sound and you need very lightweight and strong materials such as fiberglass and that tends to be a, that tends to be a little bit pricey so what I did is I designed my rocket to travel at a slower speed so I could use cheaper materials since is, such as like cardboard and plastic and then the next school year he kept coming to me and saying his junior year saying oh I'm building this rocket with so and so I'm designing this rocket and that little spring project really turned into an interest for him into rockets well, now he's building a six and a half foot tall rocket that he is using the tube and the nose cone that he purchased, but he has laser cut all the inner pieces. He has an Arduino running the altimeter that he has a software now that downloads the information and he's gonna be able to graph the height and get the altitude and speed all from the Arduino that he's downloading the information off of. He's gotten the parachute, he's got the extension cords, everything he's come up with uh, and put this together and he's loving every minute of it and he brings me pictures from things he's researching we're working on it here in class and it just gets me excited every time a student falls in love with something that they just happen to do here one year in class and now it's turned into a major master project for him. So my project I built a high-powered laser pointer and it's a the UV what's it called the size of the Wavelengths were around 450 nanometers, which gives it off a blue color, which is typically one of the more powerful types of lasers. So this laser, when it's shown in, at night, you can clearly see the beam in like a long streak of blue into the sky. So I have a student that uh, is interested in lasers. So he has bought all the little parts and bought a pre-done laser, but has bought all the other parts or made all the other parts from scratch to make a custom handheld laser that can perform tasks for you. Always, when I'm at home, I'm always on the internet, obviously, looking things up. And watching videos of people with uh, high powerful lasers has always interested me. So I figured it'd be fun to make one myself and see how it comes out. So right now his task is he is exploding black balloons and measuring the distance and how to adjust the focal length of his lens and what he needs to do to be able to adjust that lens to pop the balloon at different distances. So he's got a lot of math involved, he's trying different lenses, and again, it came from an interest of his, and now he's testing it out on balloons. Uh, this laser, what I've tested so far, is when it's held at a two feet distance, it can pop a balloon in about two seconds. <laughs> 